Amen. We're continuing on in 2 Peter. We're going to finish, by God's grace, chapter 1 today and go on to chapter 2. And Peter was talking to us. He said, you know, I saw some amazing things. I saw some miracles that Jesus did. I'm an eyewitness to some awesome things. You can talk to our brother John. You can talk to Paul up there in Corinth or wherever he was at the time of this writing. You can talk to him. Both Paul and Peter are ready to die. Paul, the disciple, the apostle to the Gentiles, and Peter, the disciple, apostle, one of the 11, 12, with Matthias, Matthias in there, preaching to the lost sheep of Israel. And they were doing their business, and both Peter and Paul are ready to die by the hands of Nero up in Rome. And Peter knows it. Jesus told him, he said, when you're old, you're going to stretch out your arms and you're going to die. And this is Peter's swan song. And he begins to tell us about the goodness of God. He lays the foundation of Jesus Christ and who he is and the power of God and his resurrection and the amazingness of who he is, his deity, his sovereignty, his being God. And there were many eyewitnesses, he said. And matter of fact, Peter, James, and John, Peter was in that group. He said, we walked up the mountain with Jesus we went there to pray with him. We were in our own flesh. We fell asleep. We woke up and the spiritual world was taking place around us. And guys, I pray that everybody in this room will wake up and you'll see the spiritual world taking place around you. That's what needs to happen in every church in America today. That's what needs to happen in the preachers in Jonesboro, Arkansas. They think they're spiritual and they are not. They are regurgitating what they heard their favorite preacher preach this week. And they haven't hung out with the Lord Jesus Christ like Moses and had the glory of God shine so much on you that you are now shining when you come out of your closet, your prayer closet, your privacy with him, you're hanging out with God. And every Christian is responsible to do this. You and I have the Holy Spirit of God in us. And the Holy Spirit of God needs to shine forth in glory in us. And you know how he does that? Not by greatness and fame and prosperity and money and greatness. It's through serving, through obedience. That's how the Holy Spirit of God shines through us. Why? Because Jesus was that one, that great servant while he was here. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. He said, I do everything the Father tells me. I'm going to go away, send you the Holy Spirit, and he will tell you everything that I am saying, Jesus says. So everything the Holy Spirit is leading you to do is what God, Jesus Christ himself, wants you to do. This very one that Peter saw glow in the dark on the unholy slag, <laughs> holy mountain. We talked about that in sermons earlier, Mount Hermon. And he saw it with his own eyes, and he says, but that's not good enough. Witnesses are good, but it's not good enough. And we begin here in chapter 1, verse 19 today. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to you, you will do well if you take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place. You do not know where you're going if you're not reading the Bible. You are in the dark. You are just as in the dark as lost people around you if you are not walking with the light. I want to be in the light as he is in the light. I want to shine unto that perfect day of the Lord. And Peter says, man, we saw Jesus glowing in the dark, but there's a more sure word. The word shines brighter in your life than Jesus shown on that mountain to us. Only four or five of us got to see it. Because Elijah and Moses joined him. We saw that. There was just five of us. You get to hear our testimony. But I'm telling you, you get to appreciate this light. But you won't appreciate this light if you're not reading your Bible. That's what he says. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Bible prophecy is that light where God is shining us today, this very day. If you are not reading Bible prophecy, if you don't know Bible prophecy, you don't know where God has led us today, and you are not even close in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Because you, my brother, are living in Bible prophecy right now. One third of the entire Bible is Bible prophecy and only one quarter of that has been accomplished. There's still three quarters of Bible prophecy that is needing to be accomplished and take place and fulfilled. And it's happening right now in front of our faces if you're reading your Bible. If you're reading the prophecies of the Bible. Because Jesus, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And it's very awesome to know and understand. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you will do well if you will shut your mouth, shut everything else around you, everybody else's mouths, the mouths of demons, the mouth of lions, the mouth of the devil, the mouth of these people who hate God, if you will shut them out and take heed to what God is saying, that small, still voice that came to Elijah, 
There was a thunder, there was a whirlwind, there was great just explosions and earthquakes and boom, boom, boom. And he says, then I heard a still small voice and the word of God came to me and gave him absolute direction in that. You got to shut the noise out to hear the small still voice. That's why Satan invented noise. That's why Satan has a city built. That's why he builds, he gathers up a Nimrod and says, I need to do something for me. I need to go build a city, build it with walls where all the sounds can stay in and it can get so loud and so boisterous we can't even hear that still small voice of God. I need that to happen. And it's happened in every country, in every state in the United States of America. In every city, there's a city. And we got all this noise pounding in that we can't even hear the voice of God. And therefore, there is no light to direct our steps. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And if you're not in the word, you're in the darkness. You don't know where you're going, blind man. Blind man walking, walking, walking. He don't know where the cliff is. If he keeps walking, he's going to fall over that cliff. Even a blind man needs somebody he can trust teaching him the truth. If he's walking, saying, am I walking a right path? And that person can say, no, you're, you're headed to a cliff. You need to turn right or left. Or that person can say, like most preachers in the pulpit today, if you're sincere, it'll work out. Just keep walking. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're awesome. You're so great. You're so good. Oh, you've, been, you've had such a wonderful life. You're awesome. God, Jesus loves you. Keep walking. And they're leading people over the cliff. Man, person by person, drove by drove, thousands, ten thousands, millions are being led off the cliff by preachers, false preachers in the pulpits who aren't bringing them the light of the gospel. They're bringing them the cute little meme from Facebook that they read yesterday and they built some sort of little flowery oration around this little meme that doesn't include repentance, that doesn't include the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that doesn't include his suffering and yours. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are called to suffer. That is your calling. Make your calling in your election year. That's what Peter's been telling us in 1 Peter. Your calling is to suffering. Your calling is to servitude. Your calling is to lowliness. That is your calling. And you need to make your calling in your election sure. And we had Jesus. We had the great example. And he was here. He is our example. Even now, guys. But he said a more sure word than that. What testimony of the people who were there. What they saw. And we have some great testimony. He says, we got the finished word. The completed word that was forever settled in heaven, O Lord. And that is a light unto us. And it's a more sure word of prophecy. The book of Matthew wasn't written when he said this. The book of Mark wasn't written when he said this. They were being written. They were starting to be written. The youngest book that we have in the New Testament was the book of James. That was the earliest book, the oldest book that we have. The earliest book that was written right after Malachi, 400 years later, is the book of James. And he was preaching, he's preaching, he said, y'all better get to work. In the book of James, y'all better get to work. Those of you that are following the light of God's voice are working. You understand the law of reciprocity, reaping and sowing. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You understand working the field. You understand planting. You understand not laying in your bed during planting season, during plowing season, during harvest season. The Bible talks about in Proverbs, that's the lazy man who lays in his bed during these seasons thinking, it'll be fine, it's not gonna be fine. There's a famine on the way. You better start collecting all your stuff now there, Joseph. You better heads up. When the Lord shows you what's coming, you better plan for what's coming. And the light of the scriptures will help us with that. Because of this, what happened before is going to happen again. And Peter is telling us, if you'll just go to the prophets and you'll read the prophets and you'll understand the prophets, you'll know what God's up to today. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changeth not. So we find out, okay, so how did God operate here? And we go to the scriptures to light our way. Whereto you'll do well if you listen up. If you'll listen to the voice of the preacher telling you, don't take my preaching for, for the example, I'm telling you as the preacher to go to the Bible and read it. Every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and keep on going and don't stop. We have a more sure word of prophecy Whereunto you will do well if you'll take heed unto that prophecy as a light that's showing you where to go in the dark. Is this world dark? This world's dark, ain't it? You'll know exactly where you need to be and you'll have great peace. 
knowing that you sat with the Lord today and you sat with him throughout the day and you're still walking with him. Wherever he is is a good place, guys, because he is the light. He's the light that shineth into the perfect day, the complete day, until the day we see him face to face. He is the light in the spirit world, in our world, because all things are spiritual. We live in a dark spiritual world, and these people are worshiping dark spirits, and they're bowing down to dark spirits, and they're letting the dark spirits light their way, and they call it light. But you and I have the true light. Jesus is the true light, which lighteth every man that comes into the world. Will you take heed? Will you make it a point to sit down like Grandma did with the Bible in your lap and hear his voice and let him lead you and guide you in your heart, in your way, in the world today? Take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the day star arises in your heart. And we talked about that a little bit last week. Uh, it's not just, we can't just say, hey, it's Venus and go away with it because I'm your Venus. It's about this female power desire is what Venus is all today. And that's not what God is saying here. What God is saying here, when you and I understand the Miseroth and how God is speaking, the planet Jupiter is the narrator. It is Jesus, the king planet, who's telling the story in the stars, the sun, moon, and stars. We get that in Genesis 1.14. We also see it in Psalm 19. The heavens are declaring the glory of God. We see it in the book of Job. Job talks about the Miseroth of God, the storybook of God, the Bible in the sky. It's telling his story, and we know the king planet, Jupiter, the largest of the planets, represents Jesus, the man who is here to be the king of kings, the king of the earth. And the earth refused him when he was here, and now he is the spirit king in our hearts. We've gone from what God wanted to implement here on earth called the kingdom of heaven, and they executed that, and God knew they would execute that because God sent Jesus here to be executed when they were going to execute the plan. And when Jesus rose from the dead, there was a new plan, an alternate plan that nobody knew about, and it was revealed to Paul called the church. And now we have the kingdom of God. It's a spiritual kingdom that's taking place, and he is the ruler from heaven, and only those who walk by faith and read his word and understand his prophecy are guided by his light and are walking with him in it, and he is shining as Venus Phosphorus is the word here, and that's why they call Venus that. Venus Phosphorus is the same word. Until the glorified Lord Jesus Christ, the scepter, the king, the true king, shines in your hearts until the perfect day. Is Jesus shining in your heart? The light of the gospel, the light of the word, have you taken heed to the scriptures this morning? Have you taken heed to the scriptures this week? We have bad weeks. There's days we skip the scripture, Bible reading and stuff, but we walk with the Lord. Have you read the Bible this week? Take heed. Take heed. Listen, let the light shine in your hearts. And he says, until the day dawn, there's a new day lighting up in our hearts till you wake up and smell the toast. You snap out of your spiritual coma like all the Christian world has been placed into a trance. You know what happened in 2000, in 9-11, 2001? That big explosion, the towers going down, and the Pentagon, and all this stuff taking place, and the monies go missing, and it was a humongous ritual to turn you away from the living God unto a cult of patriotism. And it has worked. Christians will wave their flag, and they're waving their little banners, and their noisemakers, fireworks, everything else, get out the barbecue, everything's 4th of July, take a knee, boy, take a knee, boy. Why don't you take a knee in the kingdom of God? Why don't you pray once in a while? Why don't you snap out of your patriotism, and why don't you get into holiness? Why don't you get into the fire and the light of the gospel? Take heed this morning. Why don't you do that? Take a knee. Take a knee. Quit complaining about some guy that won't take a knee over a pagan flag. And you get mad at yourself in the mirror for not taking a knee this week before a holy God in humility and power and righteousness. And he's calling this to you. And those of us that have done that, it's been a new day in our lives. Remember the day when you were a Christian and didn't do that? And then the Lord woke you up. And you see the importance of having the fire, having the word, having prophecy in your heart, following the Lord Jesus, hearing his voice, taking heed. And now there's a new day dawned in your life. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Things mean nothing to you. It, it's become your philosophy that if fire can burn it now, it is garbage later. 
I don't want nothing to do with this world. Take it. You know who's a godly man who's, who the day star has risen in their hearts? Jesus Christ is absolute king of their lives. They're the ones who, if you take everything away from them at this very moment, nothing will change with them. Job. Their hearts remain the same and God remains glorified in their hearts because the day star is shining because they have followed the light to that. They have followed the truth. They followed prophecy. They have a more sure word than feelings and experientials and the blessings of God. They now have the blesser himself and he is sitting on the throne of their hearts and they have a new day dawned in their heart and it's a day under righteousness. And it's a day where we are looking forward by faith in the spirit kingdom called the kingdom of God to a physical one called the kingdom of heaven, beginning with the Lord Jesus Christ rapturing his church, the faithful ones, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the believers in the old book. They've taken a new look at the old book, a fresh look until the day has dawned in their heart. The day star has risen in their lives and Jesus holds the scepter and he sits on the throne of our heart. You have a throne in your heart today and something is sitting on that. Those of us that have gone to the scriptures, praise God. Those of us that have taken a knee this week, those of us that are taking heed right now are walking with the Lord Jesus Christ and we are looking for him to come. Guys, heaven ain't about you escaping uh, the, the badness down here and the pain down here and the misery down here. Though that is a byproduct. Heaven is seeing Jesus and being with him. Fall in love with him. Fall in love with the true light. Fall in love with the word. Fall in love with the scriptures. Fall in love with prophecy and the testimony and the spirit of prophecy. Fall in love with him. Fall in love with the king who wants to reign in your heart with a scepter, the phosphorus one, the glorified Jesus Christ, the king of kings and lord of lords. Fall in love with him. This is what heaven is. You keep reading that word, boy, it's going to happen just like that for you. Verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy that was given to us came out of some guy's imagination. It was not of some private interpretation. Oh, oh, that guy, they've got 40 different guys writing stuff. Oh, well, if you would read it, you'd find that they're all in harmony with each other and none of them contradict each other. Get to reading that stuff and you'll find out that it came from a different source than those 40. They just happened to have the pen in their hand while he was dictating them what to write. This came from the Lord, these 66 books. And we got to understand that. Know this first. Know this first before you can take heed to what the scriptures are saying. Know this, it all came from God. And it's his voice. You don't just read a little cute little Bible story and, oh, Peter, James, and Johnny say about Peter, James, and Johnny say about Peter, James, and Johnny say about Adam, they believe say, and it becomes some sort of little story to you. You need to understand what happened. What Peter, James, and John were all about. They were the church inside the church. Did you know that? Every church, if they're a gospel, Bible-believing church, has a church within inside the, itself. There are the people who show up on Sunday, and there's the people who show up daily. Peter, James, and John in the sailboat. Why were they in the sailboat? What body of water were they on? Who created that body of water? What was about to happen to them? It's more than just a little cute little story. Flannel graph and a song for the kids. This is life-changing. This is earth-moving, and it'll change every time you read it. God will give you a new perspective of that little story. It's more than a story. It's life. And none of that came to us by private interpretation. It all came to us by the Word of God, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by what fellas come up with out of their own heads and hearts and minds and their experience, but holy men, holy men, set-apart men, men designed before he created the world. He said, I'm going to have... My book, which is forever settled in this heaven, I'm going to create me an earth, and I'm going to get my book down there, and i got 40 dudes I'm going to choose to write. And I know exactly who they are and when they're going to be born. He told Jeremiah, I knew you before you was in your mama's womb. You, you were called. John the Baptist was called in his mama's womb. He's filled with the Holy Ghost in his mama's womb. The father knew all this stuff. He knew his who his boys would be to write his book. They were holy men, not unholy men. They were not Joseph Smith's. Unholy Freemasons, liars, horse thieves, womenizers. These guys weren't that. These guys were holy. These guys were righteous. These guys weren't of a different persuasion and a different Jesus. These guys were holy men who were of a holy God, of a holy Jesus, a holy righteous writer of the holy word. They were that before God put a pen in their hand. God said, now get to writing. And because they were that kind of men, they could be trusted with the pen. 
And they wrote, they didn't write anything extra. And when Paul wrote something extra, he asked God. He said, God, I really feel I need to put this in here right now. What you taught me, can, can I go ahead and put this in here? God said, sure. He says, this portion here I'm about to write is not directly from God. He did not tell me to write this. I asked permission. He told me I could write it. That was about our relationship with him as husband and bride in the church. He says, however, I speak to you of a mystery of the church. And then he continued on with what God told him. All these men were holy and they wrote exactly what God told them. By the, they didn't come by the will of man, it came by the will of God. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men today are moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy means set apart. Holy means chosen of God. Holy means those that God has really saved and those that really have an unction and a heart for him, those that want to take heed to that light and be guided in truth, don't want to be in darkness anywhere. I don't want to be wrong. I love truth. That's what it all comes down to. The gauge of your Christianity and how much you accomplish this week is it's in how much do you really love truth. How much do you hunger and thirst for truth, righteousness? You shall be filled. Do you hunger and thirst for truth, truth enough to seek it out? It's the glory of God to hide things. Conceal things. And it's the honor of kings to search them out. What about this, Lord? What about that? One of the greatest gifts ever given to us, and these men worked hard, labored hard, is the concordance. Strong's concordance. It's got every word of the Bible in it. You can find it right now. You can find it on your phone as long as we have cell phones and an EMP hasn't struck. It's in your pocket, the word of God. You can find any verse, any word, any phrase. It's right there. You can know it. Do you? Are you hungry and thirsty enough for that? Is that what you want in this life? Holy men then and holy men now are moved and led by the Holy Ghost, not the unholy one. Is the Lord leading you? You know right where you're supposed to be. Are you in the position you're supposed to be in today? Praise God. It's his word that does that for us. Our job in here is not to get you unsaved. It's to get the unsaved saved, realize what salvation really is. You're only saved by grace through faith. It is what Jesus did for you on the cross. Do you really believe in that? Have you really placed your faith in that? It is of him and not yourself. If that's the case, the Holy Ghost is coming in you and he'll guide you in all truth. Holy men, those that have been saved, set apart by God, will be led of the Holy Ghost and if you're not led of the Holy Ghost, that doesn't mean you're going to do everything right. You don't become perfect. You don't become sinless as a saint, even as you mature. What happens as you mature is the Lord will show you every day where you need to change. If the Lord hasn't shown you in a long time where you need to change, you're an immature Christian. But if he's showing you daily there's something that needs to change, 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 you've got to work on this. And most people won't see it on the outside because it's a thing that takes place on the inside. It's a motivation. It's a spirit. It's a wicked thinking process. God corrects those things on the inside so they make their way on the outside. When we're in front of people, we're always on our best behavior most of the time. But it's that behavior that when we're alone with the Lord that he notices and he says, he puts a check in it. And Holy Spirit filled righteous men who are matured in the Bible get spanked every day. That's one way to know whether you're maturing in the Lord. Is the Lord correcting you daily and are you making the correction? Are you taking heed? Remember the very first verse we read today was say, take heed. Do something about it. Don't, don't just, I hear you, bro. I hear you, God. I, I hear you. I hear you. I know, I know I need to make it correct. I, I know, I know. I know. Or are you taking heed and you're making corrections? I listened to a 75-year-old man from India preach. Been preaching for 40 years. I'm sorry, 50 years. The westernized world, see, they already had Hinduism. They already had demon possession out the yang over there. You got a million demons that you can worship over in India. But there's a small group of the church that's there, and the westernized world has destroyed the church there via television. He said that. He says, I don't know how anybody can sit there and grow in the Lord Jesus Christ and take heed and picture heaven and, and identify themselves with Christ Jesus and see him glowing on the mountain and, and all this stuff and they'd rather watch TV than hear from him. I just don't understand that. 
This is an Indian pastor saying it, it's worked into their church. And he was the one that brought to my attention uh, the reminder again of the church in the church. And it's the church in the church who wants to hear from God. They don't want to hear from the garbage can. What did Paul tell us in Philippians chapter 3? He said, everything that ain't of God is trash. Rubbish. Everything that's not heavenly, everything that is temporary is trash. And we've got to, we want to take me time, so we go to the dumpster. We go to the dumpster for me time. When Jesus Christ has invited you to the banquet table, and his banner over you is love. Come and dine, says the master. Come and dine. No, no, I, I gotta, I'm gonna go hang. I need me time, Lord. I'm gonna go hang out in the dump here. Come and dine. Come and dine. Come fellowship. Knock, knock, knock. I'm trying to come in and have fellowship with you and you with me. Come on, come on. No, no, no. I gotta hang out in the dumpster, man. That dumpster juice, boy. Smells good. I like his kitchen back here. It's awesome. How about if we take heed and let the Lord shine himself afresh in us today? And you'll find yourself dining at the wonderful table of God. And it's an enjoyable table. It's an enriching table. It's an eternal table. And you'll be so ready to see him when you see him. For the prophecy of the old time came not by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by God. That's how we should speak every day at work. That's how I should speak in my home. That's how I should speak in the privacy of my vehicle. I should speak being moved of the Holy Ghost. What am I speaking? The Word of God, the things of God, prayer, heavenly things. Pray without ceasing. If we would pray without ceasing, we'd be moved of the Holy Ghost. We'd be speaking as we're moved of the Holy Ghost. I encourage you to be the church within the church today. The Peter, James, and Johns who get to go up there and see special things with Jesus that nobody else gets to see or experience. And then not only that, do you get to see it. Do you be an eyewitness? He gets to put a special word in your heart because you hung out with him special word by holy men who were moved of God and they wrote down the word and now you've got that word in you, input, output, a computer. You're getting out of all the junk, defragging, delete, 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 all the old stuff and bring in everything in the kingdom of heaven and you will find joy right there. Chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets among those folks. While the holy men were writing scriptures, Jeremiah, he had a bunch of these false prophets around him. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. I want you to understand that there's no new prophecy being given. No new prophecy being given. The prophecy has been completed. Just read the one you got. Just read the books you got. Read the verses that you have right now. Read those. And while the prophets were writing, there were false prophets teaching something different than what God was saying. They were unholy men speaking an unholy word. What is an unholy word? With, with blasphemous cursings in it? No, it's something that opposes what God just said. It doesn't have to have curses. It doesn't have to have a mean face. It doesn't have to even look bad. It just has to oppose what God said in his word. That's what makes evil evil. That's what makes unholy unholy. Is opposing the author. Opposing that one who is all holy. Most holy. Most high. Do you know his word today? Have you read it this week? But there were false prophets among them. Just like there's false teachers among you. Guys. The reason we preach this message today is because it's the next five verses. It's what God wants us to preach. He knew we'd preach it from the beginning of time before he had these 40 guys chosen to pin it. We're a people here today. We have the option that we want to hear a godly, truthful, honest, true teacher. Not a false teacher. That would be the Holy Ghost. Let's just cut to the chase. The Holy Spirit's the teacher. We want to listen to him because we're reading a holy book written by holy men given to us by a holy God. And the Holy Ghost is leading us to read it. He's teaching us in all things. We're hearing his voice afresh. We're hearing things that nobody else hears because we're the church within the church. But there were false prophets among those folks, just like there's false teachers among you, who will privately come into the church bringing their damnable heresies. I had a church in Nebraska. A girl got mad at me for saying the word damn. Stood up. She was demon-possessed. Had the spirit of Jezebel in her. It jumped off of one dude who had just left. He, he, the spirit of Jezebel was on this guy the whole time he was communicating with me. And then he finally had enough. He couldn't come back with recourse because the Holy Word had shut him out. 
The light had blinded this fool. He got up and walked out. And as soon as he crossed the threshold, that demon jumped on her and she went to mouth. And she had been good the whole day. And she went to mouth and, and she got mad because I said, damn in church. Damn's in the Bible. And men are damned because they won't believe the truth. And they bring in damnable heresies and people don't know they're damnable heresies. They embrace them as love and grace. What is a damnable heresy? A, her a heresy is a thought, a teaching, a doctrine that will damn you to hell. That's what a damnable heresy is. And it will damn you to hell. What is that? Anything besides the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to get you to heaven is a damnable heresy. Amen. If you got to be a Jew, if you got to keep the Sabbath, if you got to do this or got to do that, or you got to repent every other weekend, you got to get baptized every week, you got to take the Lord's Supper every week, that's a damnable heresy. And you are going to hell because you're trusting in something that you did. Amen. And you are damned to hell, man. And Jesus Christ wants to deliver the damn. And he did that on the cross. And you got to believe in his death, burial, and resurrection is what made the difference. There was a whole lot of folks crucified on crosses and buried, but there was only one who rose from the dead. Even Peter was crucified, but he didn't raise from the dead. He's going to, and he knew of a blessed hope. Paul knew of a blessed hope. He's about to get his head cut off, but he knew that he would raise from the dead. Do you have that hope? Do you walk in righteousness? Do you walk in deliverance or damnation? Do you walk in truth or heresy? Truth is only found in scriptures. Guys, you will stay away from heresy. You will stay away from the false teachers. You will know how to identify a false teacher the more you know the light of God's gospel, his truth, and his prophecy. We are in the middle of prophecy right now. You better get to know that truth. You better quit hanging out with that which will burn with fire in the dumpster. And you get over to where things are gold, silver, and precious stone in the eyes and heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you meditate with him. You walk with him. You give yourself holy, W-H-O-L, holy unto those things. Unto what things? Holy things, H-O-L-Y. Give yourself holy to the holy. It is time we decided to do that today, guys. Everybody in this room, quit fractionalizing your life. There is no me time and him time. The scriptures, the light of the scriptures, the truth that is not damnable heresy, but is a truth that will bring you blessing eternally. It says, give yourself holy to the holy. And I encourage you guys to do that today. I encourage myself to do that today. This passage is an encouragement to me, your preacher. And it says, but there were false prophets among the people, even as there's going to be false teachers among you who will bring in privately damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Jesus Christ had on a cross, and with his shed blood, he purchased the ransom of everybody who was damned to hell. We were going to hell. But Jesus Christ died on a cross, so we wouldn't have to. The Father was appeased in what he accomplished there at Calvary. His blood is enough to, that will cover us. There was enough shed by faith that, that it will cover every human who's ever lived. And those humans who would believe in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, his shed blood could be washed, could be saved, could be made free, could be made whole and holy. Boy, that's believing in him and, and trusting in him. And there's a whole lot of people who deny that very fact that he did that for them. Uh, the Jews, they don't believe that the Messiah has already come. They believe in damnable heresies. Okay? The Jehovah's Witness believe in damnable heresies because they don't read the Bible. They add... What trumps their Bible is their magazine, Watchtower Society. That trumps their Bible. That trumps their truth, the light of the gospel. The Mormons, they have another book called the Book of Mormon, which trumps the gospel, the, the true light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They bring in damnable heresies. And they'll, come knocking, and they'll come knocking at your door and bring those damnable heresies right to your house. Your children, what if they open the door one day? These people say there's no hell. When Jesus himself said in Luke 16, there's a hell, buddy, and it's hot. And people there can't get water and they can't get out. There's no hell. We have Christian churches, Protestant churches preaching that today. Presbyterian, Episcopal, Methodist, some of them preach there is no hell. There is a hell. The Bible, the Holy One in the Bible told us about a hell that is hot, it's miserable, and you will never get out of it. You believe those damnable heresies, you're going to a place that you don't even believe in. You better believe in what God says to believe in and you'll find salvation. You'll find peace. You'll find light. You'll find life. People right here is what people call the Christmas season. 
He will bring us goodness and life. He will bring us goodness and life. <clears throat> Most people are singing about the Antichrist when they sing that. Because the Antichrist in the New Age world is going to bring them goodness and life. You see, right now they're building up the chaos so great that they need somebody to come in and calm the chaos, and he will. It's a false chaos, and he'll bring a false peace. Riding a white horse, his name is Barack Hussein Obama. This is the truth coming in at you. And there is a group of Christians who just think that he's a holy one of God, chosen of God to be a good man, to bring us great goodness and joy. He will bring us goodness and life. Boy, if he were reigning again, he'd be great. He's going to reign again, and he's not going to be great. He will be great in the sense that he will be the world leader, but not in God's eyes. Guys, what is great is what is great in God's eyes. Now, he's God's man, he's God's anointed, he's chosen to be this person. But people are bringing in damnable heresies that are going to damn people to hell because they don't understand the characters that are on the world stage right now. They don't understand who Trump is, and they don't understand who Kushner is, and they don't understand who the leader of England is. And they're talking about this great world power. They're wanting to build the, the temple back there in Jerusalem. You better know which side of that you're on. You better know what side God's on. Now, there will be a temple in Jerusalem that will be profaned. we got to see God's hand at work here. We're going to look at that here in a second. But just like as these holy men of God were writing holy prophecies, there were false prophets among them saying the opposite of what God was saying. The prophets are crying out the true prophets of God. They, they have very small congregations and very few people listening to what they're saying. The false prophets have herds, have huge crowds by the thousands. They're on television, and they have rock show concerts just before that happens. That's what the false prophets are doing. You can identify that many times by the size of the crowd who's listening. Those who will stay. Because true prophets get to the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is you are a failure without the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a sinner that needs forgiven. You need to come to him and let him empower you with his light and truth. And you need to get out of yourself, out of the world, out of sin, out of Satan, and into the book. True prophets will tell you that because true prophets will guide you to Jesus, not themselves in the offering basket. But there are false prophets out here today among the people teaching falsely among us. And they come in privately. And, boy, you turn to the Christian channel and you think they're Christian. Because all, all the teaching you get is from these cats. We need to get our teaching from the Holy One, the Holy Ghost, and be men who are led, moved, holy men, moved of the Holy Ghost. And the word that we read that week, and they'll deny the Lord that brought them up. What is denying? The doctrine's about him. Bodily death, burial, and resurrection. There's a lot of Christian cultures who don't believe that he did that. Denying that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Messiah. None of the Muslims believe that. Catholics don't believe that he's coming back in a rapture. They believe the entire revelation is allegorical and not true and real. That those prophecies are bunk. That's a damnable heresy. They're denying the very Lord that they call his name. They, they talk about a Jesus. They talk about a Mary. They talk about a Joseph. But it's three different characters. And now we've got Netflix down here in Brazil, got a homosexual Jesus. And they're just making a fun laughter thing of that. And all the people in Brazil are watching that, and there's a choice to be made. The holy versus the unholy. The true Jesus of the Bible versus the fake one. And Jesus himself says, do not be deceived in the end times. There's coming many false Jesuses. And they're going to say that I'm the Christ. They're going to throw my name out there. They're going to throw, throw it in the bin. They're going to use my name to cast out devils, do many wonderful works. They're going to do many uh, prophesyings and preaching messages and wonderful orations in my name. Believe them not. What am I supposed to believe? That right there. This is the road less taken. And this is the road we've been called to. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. This is higher ground. This is the lead me on to higher ground. It's, it, when you walk the mountain, it's effort. You got to prepare to walk the mountain. You got to walk it. And God's MO to all his men, and he said it specifically to Moses, was Moses, won't you come up to this mountain and meet me? I want you to come early. I want you to come ready. I want you to come higher. And I want you to come alone. You come early. You come ready, you come higher, and you come alone. And guys, we need to meet Jesus alone every day. I pray that you are. I pray that you are. I pray that you hunger and thirst after this book, and it is everything you need. And the things of this world have grown strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. 
Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. You know why people love the things of the world? Because they don't like Jesus. Because they look to that. They look up magazines. What's for sale here? What, what, what's, what's new here? What's new here? And we need to be looking in the face of Jesus. Because when you look in the face of Jesus, the magazine is fireable. It's, it's going to burn to the ground. It's going to end up in the dumpster. I look into his wonderful face, the things of earth will go strangely dim. That's an old time song that people wrote, inspired by the holy men of the Bible who wrote the Bible. They got it out of the scriptures, not out of their own. Oh, the Lord will bless me with a brand new house. The Lord will bless me with a brand new gig and a five car garage and five cars to fill them. And God, that's not how God works. When you look, okay, so this is Christmas. Let's just say that, okay? And Jesus was born in a manger. Jesus rode in on a donkey. They weren't even in the hotel. They were out in the barn. They were out in the garage. Nobody came to see them. They had nothing. Lowly shepherds, the rejection of rejection came to see them. But everybody hated a shepherd. They were filthy. They stunk like sheep. They were just the low lowlifes of Israel. And the angels came to the shepherd and said, Hey, I got somebody I need to go see. He's a little lamb laying in a in a basket. He was poor. He had nothing. He didn't have the pomp and circumstance. That's the same Jesus that should be preached today. But the Jesus they're preaching today has pomp and circumstance. The Jesus they're preaching today has, has great riches and prosperity and everything behind him. And he had none of that while he was here. And he called us to be like he was while he was here. And he said there's a day coming when that will change. But until then you live as a servant here. You live holy and lowly here. You live like I lived while I was there. That's how I want you to live now until I come and change things. And these false preachers have snuck in and they're like, no, let's do it like this and, and pomp and circumstance and bigness and blast and oh, uh, energy and just give more, more stuff to us. We'll give you more lights, actions and we'll entertain the clowns. You just come on in, man. We'll have a circus for Jesus. And Jesus says, man, I need to go out there and Help those poor little kids at the orphanage. I need to help those people who are being beat down. There were 1,000 Iranians killed this past week for the cause of Christ Jesus and the freedom that they don't get over there. That's where our hearts need to be because that's where God's heart is. You know where your heart needs to be? Where God's is. Not where you want it to be in your own lusts and your own desires and your own cravings, man. That's what the wicked teachers will come in and have you getting your eyes on. If you want to have... You better give to us. If you want God to pour out a bunch of blessings on you, you need to go ahead and empty your pockets on us right now. And then they'll skip town with what was in your pocket and you get nothing because they lied to you. Our prosperity is the one who saved us. His name's Jesus. If you will just turn your eyes on him and trust the book on this, turn your eye on him, the things of earth will grow dim. And those of you in this room that have done that, you know what we're talking about. You can give a, sh a shout out, a hearty hallelujah to those things, looking into the face of Jesus, how things change for your life. And he comes in slowly, daily by daily, changing us with personal changes on the inside of me. Not you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do. The Holy Spirit comes to me and says, no, you need to do it, pal. You need to straighten you up. You need to walk. You are not as holy as you think you are. You are not nowhere near you need to be. So you quit talking about them folks around you and you straighten you up, okay? You say, yes, sir, Lord. And you do that in the privacy of our own home. These guys are coming in privately trying to change the story. And they'll deny even the Lord that bought them and bring themselves to swift destruction. God is going to annihilate them. When he comes, you know what's going to happen? These guys who are preaching in the pulpits today on TBN, Word of Faith, NAR, and the rest of these false prophets who come to us in the name of Jesus, they are going to be left when we are raptured and Jesus is going to destroy them first, swiftly and destructively. He's going to shut their mouths, that's what the word says here, because Peter is writing to a people who are left in the tribulation. And those people who lied to you and got you here in this tribulation, we're going to kill them first, that's what God says. And I say, we encourage you, hey, skip the tribulation, you get saved today. Trust in the truth of the gospel, what Jesus has already said. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, the false ways of these liars, by reason of whom... The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. They say, you're straight and narrow too much. You guys preach against sin too much, man. There's a new way. Grace has come at Joseph Prince and his grace message. That guy is sending so many people straight to hell because of his grace message. The grace message is sending people to hell. You know what they preach the grace message is? God loves you, man, so much. 
And people sit there who were sinning last night and partying their brains out, and they hear, oh, I'm so... He, he's from the Philippines. You know what happened in the Philippines this morning? A 6.9 earthquake followed by 13 aftershocks of four-something to five-something. And my wife happens to be from the Philippines. And you know what's going on on her friends list and Facebook? Everybody's talking about how they partied and drank and had a great time. They don't even hear the voice of God. They don't even hear Matthew 24 saying, just before I come and judge this place, I'm bringing earthquakes to wake you up. Will you hear it? Will you hear the voice of God? All oh, those preachers that preach like that, they're so stupid. And we're evil spoken of. We're trying to warn you and wake you up. No, grace comes. You get a party till the Lord comes. Ha have faith in grace, baby. And guys, the grace, you know what the grace of God does? It delivers you from sin and directs you directly to Jesus. Grace allows you in the presence of a holy God and you get to behold his face. And when you do that, things this earth go to the sidelines. Go to the trash bin where you don't ever want to go again. And instead of understanding that God is speaking in these earthquakes, they're talking about partying and let's do this thing because they're led by false preachers, priests, and out of Catholic church. They pray to Mary and party their hearts out while God is telling them to repent. And a true preacher of God will tell you to repent. That means correct your path via this thing. Read this thing and do what it says. Fall in love with it. And many are going to follow the, the liars because they give the easy way out. They don't tell you to read your Bible and to get to know Jesus. They tell you, give us your money and just go just slap grace in the face, will you? Woo, have a blast with some grace. Yeah. And they'll follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way the truth is, is evil spoken of. And there's very few who are speaking the truth and who are coming at you with truth and who are wanting to direct you to Jesus, guys. It's about you knowing Jesus. Jesus said it was about you knowing him. Depart from me, I never knew you, is what nobody wants to hear. Get to know him and get to know him better every day. I was looking at Jeremiah. Remember we just read while the prophets were writing, there were other prophets on the scene preaching a different story. Then said I, oh, Lord God, behold, the prophets say, are saying unto them, you shall not see the sword. Jeremiah has been saying the sword's coming. Judgment is coming. He's going to warn us by way of earthquakes and fire and damnations and things like that. There's going to be tempestuous weather. It's going to get rough, man. Will you wake up? That's a sign just before he comes. Will you wake up? And these prophets were saying, you're not going to see the sword. You're not going to have famine. Good night. This is the breadbasket of the world, United States of America. You're not going to have famine. You've never had war on your soil. That thing up in New York City, that was a freak show. That was weird. But you've never had war on your soil. That thing in Washington, D.C., the Pentagon, that was a freak thing. You don't have war on your soil, and people are not even knowing that we've had war on our soil. All these shootings that are happening, the enemy has infiltrated. He's getting more and more and more. His men are gathering up in that Trojan horse, ready for the day, ready for the command. And these guys are saying, oh, it's great. God's grace. God bless America, man. Oh, bow down, take a knee, man. Let's worship God. Let's, let's honor the Lord with patriotism. And Jesus said, I'm about to destroy your country. I hate your country. Your country is filled with detestable things. They say, oh, no, it's not. He's not going to bring a sword. He's not going to bring famine. Well, matter of fact, he's going to bring assured peace in this place. He loves you so much, he's going to bring peace, 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 peace. Make America great again. And he might have three more possible years before another four-year election. We might get seven more good years out of this thing. He's doing a great thing, awesome thing. We're going to have peace in this place. No famine, no sword, verse 14. Then the Lord said, Unto me, a holy guy who's hearing a holy voice, the holy word. Those prophets are prophesying lies in my name. They're saying Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. They're saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They're talking about your financial blessings and it's just around the corner and there's going to be a landfall. Do, do you not look at the numbers? There is no way America should be existing right now financially. We should be lower than a third world country. And the only reason we have it is because this thing has been planned. So the false prophets can steal people away from God and they can be promised blessings and wonderful things and, and houses and lands and cars and peace and, and safety and, and the next football game, the next baseball game, the next series of this and the next series of that and Netflix coming out with a new series and go to the movies and da 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 It's all entertainment that can be burned. If it can be burned with fire, it's garbage. It's worth, worthless. And you and I turn our faces to Jesus the Lord God said, and we hear his voice, that's when we turn our hearts to Jesus, when we turn to this book. 
and we hear him. He says, those prophets prophesy lies in my name. I didn't send them, neither have I commanded them to go or say anything. Neither spake I unto them. I didn't, I didn't even talk to these guys. I'm talking to you, Jeremiah. I didn't even talk to these guys. And they're saying, did I talk? The Lord told me last night in a dream. You hear that all over television. You hear that in churches all over this town. Like, the Lord said, my buddy was at a, at a conference and he was wondering, is, is the gift of tongues real or false? Well, what's going on? And he spoke Yiddish. His parents were missionaries to Jewish community. He spoke Yiddish and he just felt led to stand up and he quoted a verse in Yiddish. John 3, 16. And the interpreter stood up and said, he has said it's time to take another offering. And he knew at that point, these guys are liars, these guys are shams. And the Lord taught him that day. And these guys go with the voice of the Lord. The Lord said this, and he, that guy just spoke through the Lord. He did. He spoke the Lord's word through the Lord. Man, he spoke the Bible, and these guys misquoted what the Bible was saying and said it said something totally different than what it's saying what a false prophet does, and they do it every week in this town. Don't be taken back by false prophets, guys. Read the word of God. God has not sent these people. They're pastors of churches. They're leaders of churches, and they are, have not been sent or called by God. They've been sent and called by a paycheck. They've been sent by the devil to infiltrate these places to make the churches fall dead asleep. They're singing about some season that doesn't even exist right now, and they're talking about uh, he will bring us goodness in life, and let's give presents and give presents. And every time they bow down to that lit up tree, Jeremiah 10, they're bowing down to a false god. They bow down and grab a present that doesn't belong to Jesus at a shrine, and they hand it over to somebody else. And they bow down to this shrine, and they hand it over to somebody else, and it doesn't belong to Jesus, the birthday boy. And they'll bow down one more time and hand it over to somebody else. Not in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christmas, in the name of caroling, in the name of Santi, in the name of Krampus, in the name of all the false gods, and it's not Jesus Christ. God says, I did not send them with that message. I sent them with a different one. Boom, four chapters earlier. Neither spake I unto them, and prophesied unto them a false vision of divination, and a thing of naught, and deceit is in their hearts. Continuing on. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I didn't send them. Yet they say, sword and famine is not going to come to this land. By sword and famine shall these prophets be consumed, God says. They say, oh, it's not going to happen to us. God says, yes, it will. I'll see to it that you get killed that very way that you say it ain't going to happen. When God says it's going to happen, judgment is coming to America, people. We are Babylon right now. The spirit of Babylon is a roaming spirit. They've made America Babylon because they know God judges that country. And they've made our wicked nation so wicked that God is about ready to judge it. Meanwhile, they are going to move all over there without telling you the judgment of God's coming. They're going to put up chemtrails so you can't see Nibiru with its fireballs coming your way. They're going to hide God's judgment from you while they know it's coming. And they, the leaders of Babylon, are going to blow the country over toward Europe and you're going to be destroyed. Because you listen to the liars. You listen to the fact that there's going to be no famine. And America's going to be great again. And you trusted that. And God says, I will kill you with the things you said wasn't going to happen. I surely will kill you. And by this, you shall be consumed. Continuing on. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the middle of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them. Now here's what's going to happen, guys. The spirit of Babylon is in the United States. It's going to go to Europe and it's going to go to Jerusalem because that is where Jesus said he's going to set up his throne and Satan says, I'm going to set up my throne there first. It's going to happen here in America and then it's going to happen there in Jerusalem. The streets of Jerusalem because the famine and the sword and they shall have none to bury them There's because they're all going to be dead. There's going to be nobody to bury them because they're all dead. Their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters. I will pour their wickedness upon them. Evil shall slay the wicked. You want to live evil, you will die by that same evil with a harvest portion of it. You plant the seed and God will bring in the harvest. You plant the wind, God will bring the whirlwind. And final, our final verse today. And through covetousness, they all they want is from you to take, to take, to take false prophets. And they with fake plastic words are going to make merchandise of you. Give us your money and we'll give you blessings. The judgment now of a long time lingereth not. Though it's lingered for a long time, God says their judgment is at the door. I'm about to destroy them. Do you hear today? 
listen to the truth, follow Jesus, choose all things real, not plastic. That's what that word fain means, is plastic. It's plastos in the Greek. Their damnation will not delay. Their damnation is not asleep. God has their damnation marked, all these false prophets, and the people who listen to them. I encourage you today to listen to the voice of the Lord. To say, Lord, I'm going to sit with you. I don't care about the things of this world. I want to look in your face and have everything here go by the sidelines. I trust you. I pray you want to hear your voice. I want you to light my path. I want to walk in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Let's pray.